So thanks again for inviting me today. Arthur uh, kindly asked me to um, yeah, talk about Hong Kong and um, invest Hong Kong, the institution I work for. Uh, actually, I, uh, until now, I just understood that the first speaker kind of mentioned something about Hong Kong. <laughs> I don't know what he actually said, but... Um, <laughs> Okay, so I'm talking about Hong Kong and also the opportunities and chances it can offer for Polish startups, of course. And um, Invest Hong Kong is the um, investment promotion unit of the government of Hong Kong. So we support uh, companies from um, Germany, but also from Poland, of course, um, to set up in Hong Kong, um, to set up yeah, a subsidiary over there. Yeah. <laughs> No problem. So I brought you an article from the Forbes magazine, which actually uh, ranks Hong Kong as the um, yeah, most popular capital for tech startups coming up. <laughs> and the basic reasons being... Um, thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, there it is. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much. So the basic reasons being that Hong Kong acts as a springboard for expansion in the Asian region. Secondly, uh, it offers a kind of China light approach um, because it's a very um, yeah easy place to do business and it has very um, easy regulations. And thirdly, um, there is a growing startup ecosystem in Hong Kong. Um, I mean, Berlin and London it has been for a while right now, but Hong Kong is just starting. There are a lot of co-working spaces coming up, popping up, and um, yeah, also a lot of incubation programs and accelerators setting up there. So. I'm going to talk about the three reasons um, quickly. So Hong Kong as a springboard, what does it exactly mean? So on this map you can see Hong Kong and it's quite centrally located um, in the south of China. And what this map actually shows is that it's four hours away from the key Asian markets and five hours away from half of the world's population. So um, that's why actually many companies choose Hong Kong as their Asia headquarters. Um, yeah, because it's very convenient, you can hop on the airplanes and be basically like almost everywhere in Asia pretty soon. Yeah, here you can see the Pearl River Delta. Um, so Hong Kong is a part of the Greater Pearl River Delta. And you can see that actually the Pearl River Delta, um, does it have a pointing function here, is actually a very par a tiny part of China. So um, this is the whole of China, and this is the area you're seeing here. So the area is actually smaller than Latvia, but um, as you can see from the numbers, there are 64 million people living there, and um, yeah, it has an economic power, a GDP of 962 billion US dollars, which is quite a lot, um, greater than the Netherlands, for example, or Turkey. And yeah, it kind of gives, gives you an image of um, yeah, the greater Pearl River Delta being an economic powerhouse um, yeah, in this region. So the second reason um, mentioned in the Forbes article um, is that Hong Kong is a China light approach. What does that mean exactly? I don't know if you guys heard about um, the one country, two systems regulation. So Hong Kong actually belongs to China. Um, right now, but it still has its own um, economic and political system, which means that English, for example, is an official language in Hong Kong, also makes it quite easy for companies to set up there compared to China. Um, Hong Kong has its own currency, its own legal system, and um, also separate immigration laws compared to China, so it means that they can issue their own passports, for example. Uh, yeah, and we're talking about the um, Hong Kong being the freest economy in 2015, ranked again. And that's basically because of its rule of law and the property rights protection. So many companies who go to China, they have problems um, actually uh, protecting their IP. In Hong Kong, that's totally different because you can take someone to court if um, yeah, they violate your um, IP. And there's no limit on foreign ownership, which means that every foreigner can set up a company there and invest in Hong Kong. Yeah, and the third reason, ah, no, sorry, there's an Asian comparison about the uh, tax system. So you can see here 
that um, Hong Kong compared to Singapore and China has quite a low tax rates. So it's a very transparent system. You can see that um, the corporate um, gains tax is 65% and an income tax of 15% flat. And uh, yeah, there's, for example, a no sales tax, uh, no capital gains tax, which also makes Hong Kong very attractive, of course, for, for foreign companies. Yeah, and the third reason being that Hong Kong has a growing startup ecosystem. So you can see that um, by now there are over 20 funding schemes for companies, no matter where they're from. So also as a Polish company, you can just go there and apply for funding. Um, there's no discrimination against uh, foreign companies, so to say. And also, by now, they have 34 co-working spaces um, compared to in 2010, it were only three. So it kind of tells you that there's like a really rapid development. And that's also quite important because um, I don't know if you've heard about the high rents in Hong Kong, which is kind of an obstacle for a foreign company. But um, yeah, co-working spaces kind of make it easy to set up because you can just start from the scratch with, um, I mean, you know how co-working spaces look like. You can just have a desk and kind of like try and start there without actually having like a super expensive office space. Yeah. Um, this just gives you an idea of um, what those co-working spaces look like because um, yeah, and the normal pictures of like Hong Kong offices are like really tiny rooms with no windows <laughs> and it's really different. So um, nice atmosphere, like basic offices, of course, for any kind of startup from any industry. And you can um, have a desk there for starting from, uh, let me calculate, so it's about 40 swat, which is like 10 euros a day. And for a, um, for a monthly rate, it's I think um, for, hundred SWAT, which is a hundred euro, so uh, 1,000 Hong Kong dollars. But also like for, um, yeah, companies producing more physical products, yeah, um, they're like for crafters, tech company, companies, of course, but also for um, fashion and design companies, there are spaces there. Yeah, just a quick um, uh, view on this slide, it kind of shows you, okay, uh, by now they're uh, 1,553 startups um, incubated in those programs, so it's even more altogether. And uh, the number of startups that we have supported, um, not only from the Berlin office, but from all over the world, is has um, risen by 77%, which is quite a lot, I think. So, um, yeah, these are just like, uh, I picked four of them of the private sector incubators. Um, yeah, they differ in what they do. So Ness is um, quite popular. It provides mentorship and funds um, for equity. They do um, seed capital, but also um, yeah, further investments and um, growth support programs. And uh, yeah, the Blueprint, for example, is a um, it's a very new program which has started in the beginning of the year. Um, yeah, it has a co-working space as well, and um, it's a B2B incubator. So if you take part in the program, you can have the free office space for a certain amount of time. Uh, the Brink incubator is pretty um, popular because it's an IoT accelerator, so it kind of like bridges the, um, bridges the gap between uh, software, hardware, and services. And it kind of takes the, the startup from the whole journey, um, from starting from incubation, uh, to distribution and sales. Um, and later on I will introduce a company who actually has set up in Hong Kong um, with the help of the Brink Incubator. Uh, FinTech, it kind of says uh, already what that's about. So it's like Accenture FinTech um, incubation program, um, which uh, yeah, takes startups um, supporting like banking and finance innovation from uh, New York over London to Hong Kong. And because Hong Kong um, had a very strong financial industry in the past, and of course those banks also need innovation, uh, fintech companies are pretty popular in Hong Kong, uh, and really, yeah, are a thing there right now. Um, just a quick view on this one: um, it's, it shows um, one of the um, science parks, which has like it's a publicly funded um, scheme. And depending on which um, sector you're from, so are you actually offering just um, 
tech device or are you in biotech or um, an app-based company, you apply to one of those different schemes and they also, you can see that they differ in their duration period, also the um, premises and the financial aid you can actually get, so that kind of depends uh, what you're into. Um, Cyberport is kind of similar, it um, applies more to, um, yeah, um, yeah, how to say, I ICT companies probably, yeah, that's the best way to put it. And um, depending on if you're really like located in the cyber port or have an off-site um, interest, meaning you work from somewhere else, but still take part in the program, you can see, okay, um, different uh, aspects apply. Yeah. And um, we also have a startup uh, competition going on. It starts in, or it takes place in January. Um, and it focuses on the four uh, sectors you can see here. So it's FinTech, Health Tech, IoT, and Data Analytics and E-Commerce. So um, it's a whole week of um, yeah, workshops, conferences, um, seminars, also competition, which gives uh, foreign startups, of course, like a great opportunity to uh, pitch to investors, um, get to know the scene, meet uh, interesting people who kind of are already in the network and yeah, you can learn from their first-hand experience. I think it's quite um, exciting project. And uh, this is the company I was just talking about. It's a Berlin startup. It's called um, Feel the Beat. And they developed a smart controlled, a smartphone controlled um, metronome for uh, musicians to uh, yeah, feel the beat while they are playing. And um, they were actually looking for pretty uh, specific motors, like engines, which had to be small but still effective, like 600% um, stronger than a smartphone. And they couldn't find that in Germany, so they were uh, asking around, and there were only two companies offering like those specific engines and so they said what the hell <laughs> we're going to Asia and then they went to China and um, just the area I was talking about before uh, if you just go across the border from Hong Kong to the mainland there's Shenzhen and um, yeah you can basically get everything over there like if you're a tech company that's the place to be you can prototype within three weeks and they went there and they're like huge malls offering like uh, electronic components and they uh, they told me that there was like a old uh, woman she was hosting a booth and she had like 35 of those engines they were looking for so they could actually just try it out and uh yeah work with that and yeah they're already there now so they have one part of their um, company the operations in berlin and the other part um, in hong kong so that's actually one of the big case studies because that's so typical that like a tech company goes there, they set up in Hong Kong because they, um, as I told you before, they want to um, benefit from the, uh, yeah, the IP protection from having everything in English, from the tech system, but they still um, produce their st stuff in, in China. Okay, so very quickly, I'm almost done. Um, what we are doing exactly is, um, so I work in a Berlin office, um, and we are more like the general contact point. So um, whenever a company uh, considers of expanding to Hong Kong, they would contact us. And um, yeah, I can, what I just told you is what I tell the company so I can inform in a general way about the tax system, about the law, and about the basic advantages. But for example, if a company has specific questions concerning regulations or uh, the market environment about consumers, what kind of like market demand is there for your product or your service, then um, I will refer them to my colleagues in Hong Kong and we have specific sector teams um, who actually have pretty specified knowledge, uh, knowledge in the um, different industries. So um, we kind of support every company um, from here and then if they're going to Hong Kong they are taken care of uh, by our colleagues. And um, yeah, so what we do there is that we kind of um, help them with networking, of course, do the company registration, help them to find office space, employees, whatever. So um, yeah, I think uh, to go. <laughs> and um, if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to ask them now or later, or uh, I can also give you my business card. Um, you can always approach us in the Berlin office and 
yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs>